Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Nunheimer. This is the July 24th meeting of the Barnstable, Town of Barnstable Licensing Authority. With me to my right is Mr. John Flores. Uh, to his right, Nancy Carlson Lidman. And to her right, Jessica Silver. To my left is Aaron Logan. Our, I'm not sure of her title anymore because it keeps changing. Uh, <laughs> the meeting being televised live via channel 8 or high definition channel 1072. It may also be accessed via the government access channel live stream on the town of Barnstable website. Uh, as I said, it's being recorded. If anyone here in uh, is recording the meeting at the same time, you've got to make it known now, pursuant to Chapter 30A, Section 20. Seeing none, I will open up the meeting to public comment. If anyone has a public comment on any general matter not related to the business on the agenda. Seeing none, I would take a motion for the approval of June 26 minutes. So moved. All in Second. favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next matter is an application has been filed by Vendetti Enterprises, DBA Madakis Wharf Restaurant, 271 Millway, to amend the live entertainment license from 1 pianist daily, 5 p.m. to 12.45 a.m. to a one to three piece amplified band. Amended hours are Friday, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Is anyone here from Mattakee's Wharf? Why don't you come up to the podium, make sure that green light is on, and tell us your name and the magic. Hi, how are you? Paul Venditti, owner of the Mattakee's Wharf restaurant. Good morning. Good morning. So this is going to be in your bar area? Correct. All right. And so we're just... Are we still going to have the pianist? How's that going to all work? Or are you going to have just instrumental? No, uh, the pianist is um, long gone. That's something from the past. We haven't had that for many years. Okay. Uh, we switched over now and having a, a band playing the, the three nights that you had said. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Morning, sir. Morning. Any, any issues with this? License at Mattakee's Wharf, sir? Uh, not at all. They've been okay. operating like that for some time. This was just a matter of changing an old license to, to get it updated. Perfect. Any, anyone from the public wish to speak to this application? See none. Mr. Flores. I'll make a motion. I move to approve the amendment to the live entertainment license for Venditti Enterprises, Inc., doing business as Mattakee's Wharf Restaurant to remove the pianist and replace it with a one to three piece band on Fridays from 6 to 9 p.m., Saturdays 7 to 10 p.m., and Sundays from 5 to 9 p.m. as submitted. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Keep it going. Right on. The second is an application filed by Warren T. Baxter, Inc., DBA Baxter's Boat Cl House Club, comma, Inc., 177 Pleasant Street, Hyannis, to amend the live entertainment license from daily live amplified music up to three performers inside on Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 7 p.m. to 12.45 a.m. and Sundays 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. to Fridays 5 to 7 p.m. live amplified music outside for a single guitar player and Sundays 3 p.m to 7 p.m. live amplified music outside for one vocalist. Hi, good morning, Bob. Sir. Good morning. Uh, ben Baxter, Baxter's Boathouse. Uh, I believe we want to keep everything the same inside. Did, did I hear that correctly? That So uh, it's kind of phrased as an amendment to change one for the other. We, we, don't, we so, don't want to do that. What, what we're looking for is... Uh, outside Fridays from 5 to 8, uh, one vocalist, and on Sundays, 3 to 7, um, one vocalist, he has a guitar. Um, so a single person, those two periods with a guitar? Yeah, the, the, on, on Fridays, no guitar, he just sings, uh, mostly like Neil Diamond, Barry Manilow. 
mm. mellow music. <laughs> the goodies. Um, and then on Sunday, I don't know if you're familiar with him, Smitty on guitar. He plays Yacht Rock, Jimmy Buffett. It's very mellow. Um, we've been in business for 67 years. We haven't had a complaint. We, we haven't been outside since COVID. Um, it's kind of a new thing for us, but that's what we're looking to do is to have someone on Fridays and Sundays and keep the entertainment inside the same. So Fridays 5 to 8. Correct. All right. And Saturday, I mean Sunday 3 to 7. Correct. I just want you to put Smitty by the rail so I can deal with it. Okay? <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any questions? I, is the guitar amplified? A little bit, but n no. Not? Not. It's, he, he's such a regular guitar. Jimmy Buffett, very mellow. Okay. Uh, like I said, we, we've had no complaints. And, okay. Uh, Anyone and else? on Friday night, sometimes there's two singers. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, Matt Lebeck and his son play. Okay. But that's inside. That's outside. That's outside. Oh, that's He'll outside. have his son accompany him on occasion. Uh, I know he's, the, 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 he's in college. He's oh, yeah. in the drama club. He sings. He's good. Okay. And he sings the same song as his dad. He's, it's not rock and roll. It's, it's all, like I said. No, I've gone many times. It's, it's pretty mellow. Yeah. All right, so let me just make sure we have it right. Fridays, 5 to 8 p.m., live amplified music outside. It, it could be up to two persons, one guitar player. He does not play guitar on right. Friday. He just sings. He just, they just sing. Okay. Acapella Fridays. Correct. No, it's not acapella. They have a track. Oh, they have a music track. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Sundays, single to guitar player, 3 to 7. Correct, sir. Outside. All right. So, we were, I guess we're amending the light of the application to not change the inside daily live and just provide for the outside. So I would take, oh, I'm sorry, does anybody from the public wish to speak to this application? Seeing none, Mr. Flores, if you want me to fashion a motion or you want to do this? Make a motion to approve the application filed by Warranty Baxter, Inc., doing business as Baxter's Boathouse Club, Inc., to amend the outdoor live entertainment to reflect um, two singers maximum on Friday nights from 5 to 8 p.m. and for um, a single vocalist accompanied uh, by guitar on Sundays from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right, the next application has been filed by the Fraternal Lodge AF and AM 1989 Falmouth Road, Centerville, to hold Brazilian Day, a member drive, on August 18, 2024, from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Um, entertainment to include a live amplified band. How are you, sir? Very well. My name's Jonathan Brown, and I have my assistant, Trey Brown, with me as well. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe he can speak to this. <laughs> he might be more qualified. <laughs> so, so you're looking to improve and get an entertainment license. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, tell me about what you're going to do. And So what we'll, what we'll have is a, a band, a live band, um, as well as... Um, an acoustic single person. Um, it's our big fundraiser for the year. My, my goal for the money earned from this is to yeah. buy every elementary school child in Barnstable a backpack full with every supply they need for the year. Okay. And how many people do you expect to come from this? Last year we served, I believe, 500 dinners. About half of those are to-go's. Um, so it's a couple hundred people. Okay. And this went through site plan. Did they meet yesterday? Thank you, Chair. Uh, this item did go through site plan review. Um, worth noting initially, the request was for alcohol as well. Uh, we were informed by the building commissioner that there is a special permit on this property that actually does not allow alcohol at all, um, not even a BYOB. Mm -hmm. 
So we're asking the board to um, unfortunately just deny the alcohol based on the uh, building commissioner's guidance and we are in support of the entertainment license. All right. So I would make a motion that the application be amended to remove the request for alcohol license and that the entertainment portion of the application be approved. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck, sir. Thank you very much. Next application is filed by Not Your Average Joe's, D Inc. DBA Not Your Average Joe's, 793 Iana Road, to amend the alcohol manager from David Hamill to Mariah Bell Bassett. Anyone here from that? All right, we'll push that down the list and get to the more important stuff. Do you want to approve it? No. Uh -huh. But we don't need them to come to that? I would recommend waiting. I do think we should speak yeah. to the to the manager, but we can wait. They were noticed. Um, we can wait till the end of the meeting. Okay. The next application has been filed by Cape Cod Beer, Inc., DBA Cape Cod Beer, 1336 Finney's Lane, Barnstable, to expand the outdoor dining area to include up to 250 seats on the currently licensed 6,700 square foot patio. And there was also a mo an application by Cape Cod Beer, Inc., DBA Cape Cod Beer, to temporarily expand the licensed premises to include up to 250 seats on the currently licensed 6,700 square foot patio for the event, event, the event dates and times as noted. Mr. Marcus, welcome. Good morning. So, I think the best way is to summarize what I think is going on. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> <laughs> so, at this time, under the current situation, we can't approve the additional 250 seats on a permanent basis outside. Correct, after yesterday's site plan review, uh, informally it was determined there's a few things we need to straighten out. Okay, but we can, under the expanded dining provisions, expand it 84 seats on a permanent basis. Okay. And approve the temporary extensions up to 250 seats for those special dates. That's the conversation that um, I had, yeah. All right, is that motion acceptable to you? It is. Okay. Officer Kelsey, is that? Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, Commissioner uh, Florence called me this morning and I'm completely okay with that. I just wanna make sure that there's clarification. Right now, the way it stands is that there is a capacity for the indoor, which is 84 seats. Um, what he's allowing is basically for them to flex those seats to the outside so that they have more outdoor capacity. The question that I did ask him is right now they have 49 seats outside that is already approved. Is this 84 in addition to the 49 or is it 84 total? His answer to me was it's 84 total. It is not 84 in, in addition to the 49. Okay. That's in, I don't know, is that? So. I can show you his text. No, that's, <laughs> take your word for it. <laughs> no, so, so and, and because we just, I did just talk about this um, with uh, the Marcuses, that because there was the 49, before I had gotten word from Chris, from the commissioner, that no, it's 84 in total, not, for, not the additional 49. So it's 84 total outside. Um, N noting that whatever you take, whatever you put outside up to that 84 has to be removed from inside. So you can't have the 84 seats outside and inside. There has to be some combination of that. So then I can bring it to 84 outside, but then I can still have 49 inside. No, your total capacity will be 84 until you go through site plan and address the issues that was brought up in site plan. Forgive me, but there's 84 inside mm -hmm. and there's 49 outside currently. Correct. And 
you're saying I can bring outside up to 84, or I could, you're saying I could bring outside up to 84, but then I'd be removing 84 minus 49 and adding those to my outside seating, leaving the difference inside. I'm not saying anything the building commissioner is. Okay, well, that's, okay. Uh, let me just make sure I understand because I don't want to get too far down this. That's not what he talked about this morning. All right, you know what? Let me let me do this. Let me let I, me just uh, that's the in, confusion. That's in conflict with what we had just spoken about ten well, minutes ago. I, so. they, but I think there's a different confusion here at this point. The current license says forty nine inside. The current license says forty nine on the outside patio. How many on the inside? The commissioner indicated that it was 84. Inside. Inside. Yes. The tables and so chairs, 84 he's, inside. So he's got a total of 123 seats. Correct. 133. I went to DY. I can't whatever. do math. <laughs> yeah. So 133 seats. Correct. And now, essentially, what I think the building commissioner is saying we got to go back to 84. That's so, the confusion. I did speak with Commissioner Florence this morning, and then for clarification purposes, um, we actually texted back and forth. My question to him was, if Cape Cod Beer flexes the 84 seats from inside to outside, is that their total capacity, or are they allowed to use the 84 seats outside in addition to the 49 seats that, are already, that they're already approved for? His answer to me was 84 is the max until he gets site plan review work done. Then I'm losing seats. <laughs> yeah, now he's losing 49 seats. Yeah, and we're already, to be perfectly honest, because of this, we've been, this has been a huge financial struggle for us this summer. We've lost $50,000 already this month, and if this continues, we'll be down 100 in another month, and then we're going to start laying people off, and it's just, it's not moving in the right direction, in, as you can see from the seating. And I understand you got a text from the commissioner this morning, but, you know, again, this was a surprise within the last 10 minutes from what the, the message is getting confused here. So, um, so, so what we're saying is 49 right now outside. Is correct. We've been compliant inside. with 49 since. There's 84 the, inside, which is a total of 133. And then you're also asking for an increase up to 250, which is separate. Those special. It's a separate. So we'd be adding basically 117 seats on top of that. The that would be for those one up, day. up to 250 for the one days until we get through the site plan review changes to make that up to 250 right. a permanent change moving forward. No, I forward. understand yes. that. Right. So, so the building commissioner is saying the max is 84. 84. But that doesn't make sense because he. That math at that point, work. you just re withdraw the application and keep your 133, right? Except there's no that flex. that limits my ability to have any additional seating outside, which is during the the season where we're trying to make hay here. No, I get it. It's just it's just that if we if we approve the motion based on the building commissioner's current interpretation of the situation. Could uh, mm -hmm. may I offer a, a possible solution? No. <laughs> Which might might make it a little bit messy, but to approve the 84 in addition to the 49 um, contingent upon final approval by the building commissioner where we can sit down and this is what but that doesn't speak to the 250, the, the no. additional 113. No, Correct. that's a different the application. The 250 is, is kind of off the table right now for anything but the temporary extensions of premise. Okay. I can also add that um, we won't be taking 84 seats out of the building every single day and adding it to what's outside. Not uh, any day. Uh, yeah, this We're is, not going to take 100% of the seats out of the building. Because then people are going to walk inside and go, there's no the place to sit. Because the building has air conditioning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, there was nobody outside last week. I'm going to give him a call and see if I can get a better clarification. All right. Look, we've never done this before, but we're going to take a break so that we can get the building commissioner on the phone to straighten this out because I don't... My inclination would be to uh, uh, take Ms. Logan's solution um, at this time, but then I don't want you to get a visit from the building commissioner, and we have turf war, but this seems to be... Um, 
much. No, and I know that he was uh, under the weather this morning. So perhaps in our, yeah. in the haste of the conversation we had, it, 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 something got lost in translation. Sure. But I think we can. We want to work take with a, Take a I motion. I appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you know that? Yes. That's, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, otherwise, yeah, otherwise the they funding, all understand we're taking away from what we currently have, which right. isn't the But we're talking goal. 49 outside, 84 inside for a total of 133 and leaving it up to you how you set it up. Yeah. That's so, really what we're saying here. So I will take a motion, though, with respect to the temporary uh, extensions of premises. So um, I move to approve the outdoor dining expansion for Cape Cod Beer, Inc., doing business as Cape Cod Beer. One thirteen thirty six Phoenix Lane Principal. No, that's not it. Sorry, that's right. Uh, the five um, uh, B, the temporary extensions of licensed premise, please. How about this? Oh, we listed that as two fifty, which we can't yeah. do. They have approval from the building commissioner for those special events to have up to two hundred and fifty seats. Oh, I'm confused. So why don't you read I, that? I right. apologize. Let me do, yeah, let me take a... care of that. No, it's been a blunder. All right. On the, on the application uh, filed by Cape Cod Beer, Inc., to temporarily expand the licensed premises to include up to 250 seats on the currently licensed 6,700-square-foot patio for event dates and times as noted in the agenda as printed and moved that it be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. We... I, I have not heard from him yet. Um, just on this last item that you just approved, yep. just a comment. Um, through the informal site plan yesterday and then through conversations with the fire chief, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with the capacity inside during those special events that you are not able to have more than 99 people inside um, because of the building code, not because of any... The, the conversation that I guess that you've had with the fire chief... Uh, the building commissioner again has said that the 99 number is strong and you can't have more than that even if you do have a fire detail there that's right he There's, said if you if you're going to have the 99 inside you're going he, he said you could be running into the issue that you had before that he spoke to you about in 2019 about having to sprinkle the building if we were in violation of any right. of the the conditions that were listed on the uh, certificate of inspection if we were to have more than 99 people inside it was determined through uh, I can't quote it it was 25 and a half that it was the paragraph that um, the fire chief of the, the locality was able to make a determination as to how to um, manage a situation that was in excess of the code um, based on the station nightclub law and it was determined years ago with a file this thick with um, Chief Pulsifer and is now transferred to Chief Beal that to have more than 99 people inside that we would be okay by hiring uh, a fire watch which we have done religiously when, whenever we've had more than the 99 people according to what he said yesterday in the meeting, was that if we were um, uh, in excess of the 99 and that we were in any way in violation of any of the conditions that were listed on the COI, that we would then be subject to penalties um, according to, again, the station nightclub law, which, uh, you know, which there, it's a, a list of a whole bunch of things that puts you into a situation that could be, you know, uh, endangering public safety, which is the last thing we want to do. Oh, believe me, I, I agree with you 100% on that. Um, I just caution you with the 99 inside with those conditions because he did bring up that it could end up becoming an issue where you're going to be, be back in front of site plan and have to do the sprinkling. Understood. That's a conversation we've had repeatedly okay. with the condition that if we go above that, that we can have those types of events with the approval of the uh, fire chief and um, paying them to have a fire watch on site. I, I guess what we're missing here is what he said was the agreement you have with the fire department does not supersede code. That's what I'm trying to get across. Only if we're violating the code. 
Correct. And you're walking a very thin line on that code. From, from what I've been told. According to who? He didn't say that yesterday. He didn't say we were walking a thin line. No, what he said is that you have he to maintain. To warn, remind, he wanted to remind <laughs> us that, we that the code existed. Yeah. All right. Might be wise to have another conversation with the fire chief. Yeah. In any event, moving to the other matter, I would move that we approve an additional 84 seats in, in addition to the existing 49 seats at the premises subject to the building commissioner's approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So hopefully today he'll get back to us, or get back to you with that approval and we'll go from there. And in the meantime, I know you're f eagerly filling out an application to go to 250. And I look forward to getting that application. Yeah, thanks. All right. So question for the authority. Do you have additional Ask questions? They can, we could approve that so we don't have to wait. All right. If there's some question as to whether or not we have to return uh, to this hearing for the uh, approval of the, the permanent 250 seats, uh, the building commissioner this morning indicated that we might be able to, uh, if this was addressed today like this, that w if we did the site plan review that we might not have to come back. Um, before with the 250 is, is eligible to be used. So we would, just like with the seats, we do it subject to the building commissioner's approval? Okay. That might be the language that's necessary. Um, I'm not sure, but in the event that that's not the case, is there a way since August 28th is basically the end of our season, if there is a necessity to come back in front of you, um, is there a possibility that that could be done in special circumstances? No, I'm all, I, I'm, I'm all in favor of that, so if he approves that, subject to whatever conditions he imposes. Um, you would have the seats on, you have, still have a license approval issue to go to, to Boston. Right, so with the outdoor dining expansion, once I get that final, mm. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna have an email exchange with Brian, just so it's very clear, because everything today has been on the phone, and I understand when you're not looking at black and white in front of you, I know for me, um, I want to put that in black and white to him, have him respond, and based on his response is what I will send up to the ABCC. So if he says 84 max, it's 84 max in and out. If he says 84 in addition to the 49, that's fine. If you're going to move up... I want 84 max. Well, you have to, he, has, he has to have an understanding that 84 max actually reduces worse. the number and, and, of And that, this might all be moot by yeah. the time I, my conversation is yeah. done with him later. But the way they have created this motion, it allows us a little bit of wiggle room to get his final stamp of approval, if you will. Okay. Um, we can always come back and ask to withdraw the, de the, the, um, the decision and go, you'd have to go back to revert back to what you had before. Um, but in terms of the 250 seats, you would absolutely need to come back. And that would be, if you're talking about changing inside and outside, it would be noticed to the public. If you're talking about just changing the outside, um, we can consider that an outdoor dining expansion and it would be similar where you still need a hearing but we're not notifying uh, abutters and legal ads. Coming back into the open, we can actually do it. So, in other words, we can't approve that in advance? Correct. Okay. So, so I raise my, my question again, which is if tomorrow, the next day, whatever, we figure out that there's an opportunity to permanently make this increase, is there a chance that I could request from you um, that we somehow manage to do this before August 28th? When's our next meeting? August 28th. August 28th. <laughs> that figures. All right. Um, Do, do we have uh, that? I'm gonna. Uh, if there is a way to make that happen, under and assuming it's under the dining expansion, because that doesn't require notice of a butter to a butters. If there's a way to make an emer uh, you know, an emergency meeting situation happen to approve that right away mm -hmm. after site plan, we'll that do, would be my request. Yes. Yeah, we'll do whatever we can do. I just. I just don't know if we have that ability. So we'll check with legal today to see if that can work. And if it can work, we'll certainly do it. 
Okay. I All appreciate right. that. And whatever method we can do. Because clearly waiting until the week before. Yeah, know, no. Can, I just, it's just another month we lose revenue. Yeah. No, I'm all for getting it done as quickly as possible so you can make more money. Because pretty soon Margaritaville is going to be open. <laughs> I'm not sensing that they're getting the community's uh, yeah. positive spirit. I know. Well, that's a different problem. <laughs> so, all right, so we'll do that as quickly as possible, and then you'll continue your site plan discussions, at least with respect to that. Um, with respect to the 84 and 49, if, the, if there is a difference with the building commissioner, then I would, I think, speak on behalf of the board, consider the application to, to have been withdrawn, and you can keep the present seats that you have on your license. So. Okay, but, uh, okay, with the understanding to him, hopefully, that by going the other direction actually doesn't benefit us. Yeah, that's what I mean is, yeah. you know, you've got an existing situation. That is, in, that is better than what that would be approved. got misconstrued. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion. No, you, you actually answered my question because coming from a compliance standpoint, I was like, if this isn't approved, what am I checking on? <laughs> You're checking on the status quo. <laughs> All right. Um. Did he want to continue Not Your Average Joe's till August? Yes, we will continue the Not Your Average Joe's matter until August 28th since no one appeared. Um, does anyone from the public have any other comments? Seeing none, we have a discussion with respect to Bilal Corp DBA Willow Package Store, 700 Yarmouth Road, which as you know, received a violation after a hearing from the ABCC uh, with a suspension pen, uh, held in abeyance it is my understanding that in the event that there is another violation that the town may um, find, that would not necessarily trigger the ABCC um, penalty. So that's purely for informational purposes. I'm not sure what else we can discuss about that other than to wait until such time as, as if and when they have another violation. But they're open and doing business as usual. They are open and doing business and- Hopefully not as usual, hopefully. Right, well, yeah, right correct. <laughs> um, and you know, just looking at the letter from the, from the uh, Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission, um, that they have, do have a one day suspension to be held in abeyance for a period of two years um, providing no further violations of Chapter 138. So uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I would imagine that includes any potential violations found by this board. No, I, I do think that if we found a violation that the ABCC could trigger that penalty, we just couldn't trigger that penalty, or we could impose our own penalty that may be the same or different from that penalty. All right, uh, with respect to the consent agenda, I would take a motion, Mr. Flores. I move to approve the consent agenda as printed. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 We have some renewals, or oh, is that all the consent agenda? Yeah, the consent. so we don't have to read all those. No. Updates. All right, like, uh, police department updates? Um, it's been a fairly busy summer so far. Um, I think mostly what we're dealing with this year are some noise complaints from different uh, establishments. Um, for the most part, once we've had conversation with them, they have been cooperative and have fixed the problem. So that's been a good thing. Uh, we've been out a little bit more this year, I think, trying to address those issues, uh, both myself and and Aaron. Um, so that's that's been good. Uh, using just what we, we went through with Cape Cod Beer as... Um, an example, we, we've had some issues with 
people's licenses not necessarily adding up to what the building department said or what the health department says. And it really comes down to the fact that some of these licenses, um, like I'll use Baxter's, I mean, that, that original license was probably written on the back of a napkin in 1965. Um, so those numbers just haven't been updated in years. So slowly but surely, um, we're, we're trying to uh, get people in front of the right boards and and try to get uh, consistency. Uh, so we've been dealing with a lot of that type of stuff uh, this summer. And it, it causes frustration, obviously, for the operators. And we understand that. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we're getting it right. Well, Ms. Logan's assistant can go through all those licenses and the building commissioner's <laughs> files and figure that out. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. she. So how about licensing department updates? So we are halfway through the summer. Ooh, things have slowed down. We're still getting special events uh, that are coming in. Um, we are actually, uh, we're given the most recent updates from the ABCC in terms of our quota numbers. We are four over quota for our package store licenses. And um, this, this is not anything of this, this existing board. It was just something that had happened years ago, and it maintains, it, we, we kind of bring that along with us. But the purpose of that quota is to prepare for the season, for the annual renewals. So believe it or not, just around the corner, we'll be starting to uh, prep our alcohol license holders uh, for the renewal season. Uh, similar to last year, I plan on opening auto dealers, common victuallers, and lodging houses. Uh, they'll be eligible to apply for renewal come October. And then the alcohol license holders, as per usual, have the month of November um, to apply. And just as a, a reminder, um, full payment is expected in the month of November, along with your application to be considered complete, to be brought to this board. I know some folks have expressed some concern over being able you know, to pay that at the end of the season, but uh, those are the requirements. So get prepared and uh, hopefully it'll go smoothly. This will be our third season now of uh, being on OpenGov, which is great. Um, hopefully it makes the process a lot easier on my end and I think most people find it easy uh, for the most part so we're we're moving along I think uh, at this point no other updates does anybody else have any comments I have an update oh he has another update uh, Commissioner Florence has said that he can work with the number of 133 thank you very much uh -huh. so that would be my understanding at no point outside the capacity could be more than the 84, but he could have the 49 inside. That would be my understanding as well. Very good. So I would take a motion with respect to this meeting. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We will stand adjourned until August 28th.